Hey everyone, it's Tim Maria here live in studio at the Digital Health Summit CES, sponsored by Ideal Life. We got Hugo Campos, e patient advisor for Stanford Medicine X. Right, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of my roles. It's one of the things I do. So we had loudmouth patients making noise and making change, which was the panel. Lots of interesting folks. We had Neil, Donna, and Greg on, on the panel. What was going on there? But first, let's talk about your background. Right, so uh, I'm an e-patient, and um, essentially the way I, I come into health is by virtue of uh, um, having had a heart scare and, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, having uh, needed an implantable cardioverter defibrillator. It's this device that shocks my heart back to the to rhythm in case I, I go into uh, some bad stuff. Bad, bad stuff. Yeah, it's you know, malignant arrhythmia, to use the technical term. Okay. Um, so in any case, so I got this device, and the device is a really complex computer. These modern, uh, it's, an, it's an implant that transmits data to uh, the, the manufacturer of the device, and that data is shared with the physician, um, and, uh, but that data is not shared with the patient. Oh, so you're like, where's my data? That's it. Right, so so I, I kind of got into the digital health movement um, through, um, uh, I suppose, being a loudmouth patient asking for, asking for my data, and so uh, I, it just it seems, it, it doesn't yeah. seem right to have a, a, an electronic device implanted in your body, and then you and would have no control of it. No, I actually just went and got a checkup, and I'm always asking like, where's my data, and what do I get, and there it's. It doesn't seem like it's all quite there yet. Right, right. And it, it really is the way uh, of, of uh, patients to, to know about what's going on in their health and be able to, it's, it's, it's a way to engage people and, and uh, kind of understanding, you know, how can you save money if you don't know where your bank account is, right? So, yeah, you, exactly. you, so it, it, seems, it, it seems natural for people to be informed and the way to, for patients to engage is to um, help bring patients into the conversation by providing information and providing data. So, so how, with your story, how are you making noise? Well, the, 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 the way it's been, uh, ever since I received the device, I started asking questions and, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and the, the message started resonating, I suppose. Um, uh, I, I started running in the quantified self um, yeah, uh, movement yeah. and, uh, um, it, you know, I was tracking things about my, my health and, um, uh, and I met somebody at a quantified self uh, event. Uh, who said to me, "Hey, your story would be really would be really cool to be told at a TEDx event. Oh, cool. Would yeah, you yeah, yeah. would you um, be TEDx. interested?" Well, yeah, and I said, "Yeah, I would be very. I would love to uh, share that. Cool. So, because it's such a such an interesting audience, and so yeah, I yeah, so yeah. I so that kind of gave um, it amplified that uh, that story, and people started like relating to it, and uh, which kind of in a way makes perfect sense, not just in my situation, but in the world in which we live today, which we have our electronic devices, our smartphones in our pockets, they're connected to the cloud, and we're generating so much data at every, every second. Shouldn't you be yeah. privy to, to that? Yeah, it's like, it's my data, I'm paying the bill. Right. Right, uh, and even if, if in a case of uh, the, the manufacturers of uh, implantable cardiac devices, they feel like the manufacturer feels like they are in charge of it and they own it. Uh, but it, in, I'm, I'm saying patients should at least have access to the the, the, the data, and not should not be so did kept. You, did, did you end up getting what you wanted? No, no, no. It's uh, no. It, it hasn't happened yet. No. So. Uh, it's uh, it's unfortunate, um, and I think what we need is we need change in in policy. We need the FDA to to look at things differently. I think the FDA needs to be a little less paternalistic in their approach. Uh, leave leave some of that stuff a little more for trust people to do the right things. Uh, people don't want to uh, harm themselves. I don't believe, um, and uh, and and um, if people do want to harm themselves, yeah. they will anyway. So. So what will happen is we'll post the videos from the sessions inside onto the digitalhealthsummit.com site and you can check those out and drill into it. Um, due to time, we basically want to go into your the Stanford Medicine X and talk about what's right. cooking. Right. Oh, well, uh, Stanford Medicine X is a really, um, really cool conference, I think, uh, not just because I'm a part of it, but it's, uh, it's a really amazing conference because it, it explores sort of the intersection between um, medicine and uh, technology mm -hmm. and so uh, and it really is very inclusive of patients uh, the uh, dr. Larry Chu who organizes the conference uh, makes a, 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 a 
very big effort in including patients, and there is a, a program called a scholarship. So it's not just a bunch of talking heads on no, stage. No. Like, yeah. no, no, he really is trying to change medicine from the ground up. Uh, he teaches medicine and anesthesiology at Stanford, and so he's trying to do is bring the patients into the dialogue, bring medical students into the dialogue, and 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 start. Uh, uh, creating, fostering this kind of environment in which people can, can um, it's both patients and young doctors uh, learning from the ground up, kind of shifting the paradigm and kind of looking. It's it's a really incredible. It's a really cool conference. Is it like one, two days? How long is it? Um, it is. I, I think it's about three days, okay. and uh, and it's uh, in the fall. Um, I am um, almost sure it's in uh, September this year, uh, 2014. I think it's September 24, but I uh, it, uh, I would encourage people to check uh, to make sure that they're, they're Just right. Google it. Yes, yeah. uh, Medicine X, Stanford Medicine X. Uh, um, uh, no, it's a uh, it's a subdomain of uh, Stanford Medicine School of Medicine. So, but if you Google Stanford Medicine, so I don't know, it's a, it's a longer URL. But if you if you Google um, Stanford Medicine X. Uh, you'll find it, and, and I encourage uh, people to um, uh, sign up for for the the e patient program, in, enroll in the e patient program as an e patient. If you're an e patient and feel like you're an, an empowered, educated, and uh, equipped with uh, information about your health, right? Yeah, that's smart. Cool. Well, how do people get in touch with you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Hugo O C. Um, or um, I'm 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 online. I'm I'm on YouTube too. So. Nice, cool. Yeah. Well, hey, Hugo, thanks for wrapping up the show today. Really appreciate your time and um, great panel. Thanks so much. Thank you, Tim. You're great.